Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Kerbal Space Program 2, after something of a lackluster launch, has finally dropped its first content update, it's hoping to fill the void. And after all, it is about space, so there is a lot of void. But yes, this has also managed to drop when uh, I'm sick. But I'm going to do my best to try and let you know what is going on here. Um, so, the main thing they've added is exploration mode, and sure, you can do all the usual stuff, make sure you turn off cadet orientation, otherwise it tells you all the stuff that you've uh, you've seen every time you've played Kerbal Space Program 2, which is probably not that many times, but some of us have persevered. So, um, basically, exploration mode is, well, it's like science mode in the original game. You can go over to mission control, there's some uh, new mission objectives. Time to launch the Kerbal Space Program's inaugural mi mission. So you can get a whole mission brief from Carrie Kerman. Uh, clicking your way through it, she'll tell you all about it. Uh, so they've added a whole bunch of Kerbal lore for those people that care. And uh, it has been confirmed that they do in fact eat ice cream and uh, drink coffee. But yeah, look, these start out very basic. Uh, you know, you're going to go in build your rocket. The first objective is to get to space. Now, I'm going to point out that for seasoned Kerbal players, this is actually pretty easy because they actually give you plenty of parts. In fact, they give you enough parts that uh, some of the people in the dev channel, some of the hardcore Kerbal players with some serious expertise, have been able to, you know, get to um, all the way out to the most distant planets in the game and land. And to the developer's credit, a big reason for this is because they have dialed back the wobbly rockets factor. Maybe a bit too much. Now, we're supposed to just get to space, but I am going to get all the way to orbit. Why? Because um, it means that I can skip through the first few missions. I think this should get us to orbit 3.6 kilometers per second of delta V. Let's launch it. Now, there's not a lot of changes to the in-flight UI. You still get the usual launch and the music and the giant flame diverter that has no link to the size of the rocket. Uh, but the frame rates are actually a whole lot better, although that is what we got in the most recent uh, update. It's better, but it's still way more resource intensive than its predecessor. Now, another thing that's shining, flashing here is the experiment button. You can click on this and it gives you Basically, the equivalent of the previous science mode. You're going to collect crew observations, you can collect samples if you're on the surface, and you can transmit it back for the rewards that it gives you. The goal, of course, in exploration mode is to collect science so you can take it to the R&D lab and unlock more stuff so you can build out your spacefaring capabilities in short order. Okay, so we made it to orbit, let's do the science part of things, and if you loved reading the science reports in Kerbal Space Program, then you're going to be disappointed because there's almost no flavor text that I've found. There might be the possibility for future ones. There is plenty of flavor text back in Mission Control, but that's only for specific missions. In general, everything is greatly simplified. There's only a handful of experiments. There's also no need to get out the capsule to grab stuff and put it back in. So you don't have to do that dance in the upper atmosphere as you're trying to maximize your science. It's all like one button, minimal difficulty, uh, and, you know, it's, it's streamlined, but it perhaps is less engaging. It's certainly no worse than the original system. But there are certainly lots of commonalities. For example, there are data and there are samples and you can transmit data and you cannot transmit samples. You have to return them back to the uh, space center. Okay, so I'm not going to transmit this back to the planet because it will take 72 units of electricity and I don't have any other way of storing it. I'm instead going to go back to mission control and get an update on this particular mission. Hey, I submit it. Awesome, thrilling work on the launch pad. They passed out because of the excitement, or it could have been rocket fumes. They asked all about you, and I just said, no comment. So yeah, I'm the director. She's talking to the director. You are the person that's designing everything. So now she's basically telling you, go and check out the R&D lab, and you get a cute little animation. So now, yeah, if we go in here, we get 25 sites. And of course, let's research light launchers and... You know, you've got aerodynamics, which gives you wings. You've got construction, which is hard stuff. Environmental science. See, this is good because it actually gives you uh, an experiment. So this is a good one to research because that way you can actually do stuff with it. Now, 
If I go back to the mission control, the reason I went all the way to orbit was to save time because the next mission they say is, hey, someone's left a note about going to orbit. Hey, you're just in time. We're in the middle of a crisis. Someone left a rude sticky note for best, whatever. It was the first real launch relay success because it didn't go to space. Well, guess what? It did go to space, right? And I have to accept that challenge and then track the mission and... If I go to the tracking station and switch to the vehicle that which is in orbit, I will instantly complete the mission. So focus, uh, control, bang, you see, magic. And of course there's another one you can imagine, which is let's go to orbit. There are some updates to the core physics simulation, there's a lot of bugs that's been fixed, they've put buoyancy back in the game, which means you can have seaplanes once again, or boats or submarines. You know, I mean, sure, it's a Kerbal Space Program, but people like to build things that really don't go to space. And as you can imagine, I kind of like building aircraft in Kerbal Space Program because everything in planes happens so much faster than in spaceships. But, uh, you know, like building planes in these games actually really help me understand how planes fly. There are, like, the missions that they'll give you, they pretty much seem to be a pre prepared list of options and there's a couple which require you to deliver tourists to a couple of landmarks on the planet very specific landmarks and so this is something that's actually like ideal for aircraft because you can get them in close and you know get them within walking distance and then you just have to make sure that they are able to actually walk over there there is a bit of a problem in that it requires you to have the lander can rather than a plane cockpit. And you know, while the lander can actually will fit in line and behave like a cockpit in every way, it's actually not as robust as the other cockpits and landing in really rough terrain can be quite difficult. We choose to try landing this plane not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Or you can just use the cheat menu, which is now back in the game, which lets you teleport around, lets you give yourself science. You, previously you had infinite propellant, so uh, this technically doesn't count as cheating because it's not in the cheat menu, right? As far as I can tell, the game doesn't penalise you for using stuff in the cheat menu. So, you know, if, you, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. It is a single player game, right? You're only cheating yourself. So anyway, in the previous releases, there were many known points of interest around the Kerbin system. Strange statues, this golden arch with glowing, uh, you know, spheres on it. Well, these are now destinations for the missions. You start to get strange signals. You have to go and find these things. And landing at the specific spots can be, uh, you know, can require some skills. It doesn't actually show up on the, the heads-up display or sort of the nav ball. So that makes the kind of precision navigation needed to land within walking distance not that um, trivial. And let's be clear, the missions are sort of optional bonus points. You don't need to do them if you don't feel like doing it. You can just, you know, go to the various planets and you do the research in, uh, at your own pace. And indeed, you might find that you need to do some of these sort of science-oriented missions so you can get enough tech to sort of get to the next big goal because some of these start to get very far out very, very quickly. I'm kind of surprised that they're going to expect players to land with such precision on the planet Duna. I intentionally overbuilt this lander to make sure that it had the propellant to get to this uh, location and touch down within walking distance because look at that terrain. Even if I had a rover, I wouldn't be able to drive there and it could you could end up taking a very long time to get where you want to go. So look, to sum up, in the last nine months or so, the, the team have made improvements, perhaps not as fast as we would have liked. The game is still very much lagging behind the original if you add the mods. The main thing it has over the stock game is better graphics, but then it needs more performing, uh, more performant hardware. It has cool music, has cool sound effects, um, and it has a whole bunch of flavor text now, which tells you all about the Kerbals. And I think at this point, if you're interested in playing a spaceflight building game, then the original KSP-1 is still the best option for you. And if you want a realistic simulator of what it's like to be inside the cockpit, then there's re-entry or Orbiter. If you watch some of my more science-themed videos, you'll sometimes get, catch a glimpse of me using KSP-2 because it's there and it's easy to bolt together a demo for something. 
And I think given that holiday season is around the corner, I might actually spend some time playing it online for you all. I might actually go through this uh, mission campaign, see how far I can get, or how fast we can do it using cheats. I don't know. At this point, I put about 12 hours into the Foresight's update, and I pretty much think I've seen all the interesting stuff. And so I'm already thinking ahead to what the next update will bring. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.